Hi folks, this is Dave from Air Park Living. Today we're up in the old fighting Cherokee. I got a Cherokee 140. Uh, we're going to teach you some anti-spin training. It's a technique I've developed and I uh, want to share it with the world and hopefully prevent some of these stall spin accidents that are happening. Uh, engine failures, uh, base to final and landing and just whatever situation someone finds themselves in, we're doing the standard stall training, which is, you know, stall the airplane in takeoff configuration and then lower the nose. Uh, stall it in landing configuration, fill the stall, lower the nose, but no one's really teaching you what to do if you inadvertently stall out of trim and the airplane starts to rotate. You have three axis of flight on an airplane, pitch, roll, and yaw. When you stall the airplane, you're stalling the wing. You're losing longitudinal roll axis. When it stalls and starts to rotate and you make an aileron input, you just aggravated the stalled wing and helped the non-stalled wing. And I'll explain that with aerodynamics. I'll show you. Dynamically, what's happening in a stalled situation when one wing is stalled and the other is not and it starts a rotation. Uh, the natural pilot reaction that I, I, I'm explaining is to put in opposite aileron to stop the fallen wing. Well, here's what's happening. If you recall in basic aerodynamics, the angle of attack is the difference between the cord line of the wing and the relative airflow to the wing. So this is our angle of attack. When we reach a stalled situation and the wing is stalled, we've exceeded the critical angle of attack, that wing's going to start to fall. But if the other wing has not stalled, it's going to continue to fly and it's going to climb as the other one falls. The natural pilot reaction is to put in an aileron control input to stop the falling wing. But if it's already stalled, let me show you what's happening. When you put in the aileron input, this aileron goes down on the low wing and what this essentially does is it changes our cord line of the, of the airfoil at that moment. When you put down the aileron, this becomes our new cord line. And here was our old angle of attack, which was already stalled. Now you put in down aileron, which changes the cord line and increases the angle of attack of the falling wing. So that further stalls the wing and then a rotation will start because because this, the opposite happens on the wing that is still producing lift, it now has a decreased angle of attack. This is our new angle of attack right here on the flying wing. So one wing, you've decreased the angle of attack. The other wing, you've increased the angle of attack. And now you've just made the airplane more stalled and starting to rotate. Stalled wing and helped the non-stalled wing, and I'll explain that with aerodynamics. I'll show you. Uh, but you still have two axes of flight that you have control over. You have pitch and you have yaw. Very strong control forces during the stall, and they are the ones that will save your life. But everyone, no one really knows to do that. When they stall the airplane and it starts to roll and they make an aileron input, and then the airplane doesn't respond, it actually rolls faster, they feel a complete loss of control. But you haven't. You've only lost one of three. You've lost ailerons, but you still have pitch and you still have yaw, and those are very good, strong control inputs to stop what's going on. And I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple, but you just have to not quit flying the airplane. People stall out of trim, they start a rotation, and then they quit flying because you feel like you've lost control. It's a natural feeling, and it's a natural thing to do, but I want to show you what to do when that happens. You still have two axes of flight. you got the pitch, and you got the yaw. You need to act fast, and you'll save the day. I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. So when I get to altitude here, we're going to start doing some stalls. All right, folks, I've uh, climbed up to a safe altitude. I'm up at about 5,000 feet. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate a departure uh, engine failure and then uh, a delayed reaction with an insipid stall and the beginning of a spin. And I'm going to show you the anti-spin recovery technique that you need to know. 
in basic training, we're always taught to just get your nose down. But if something happens, we're distracted, we're out of trim, and then we stall the airplane, and then it starts to rotate, we make an opposite aileron input, and it doesn't respond because it's stalled and it continues to rotate further, you feel like you've lost control. You have only lost control in one axis. We still have two left, and that's what's going to save your life. Yaw and pitch. You've got to stop the rotation with the rudder immediately. You look over the nose as if you just took off. How you, when you take off down the runway, you're using the rudder to control the nose. You don't let it drift right and left. Well, you're going to do that in this situation. You're going to look over the nose, find an object, push rudder, and don't let the nose yaw anymore, and then push forward stick. And then the life-threatening situation is over. If you've had an engine failure, you'll still need to establish a safe glide at the best glide speed on your airplane. But let me demonstrate that now. Here we go. I'm in my airplane. I'm climbing. Everything's nice and cool. I got a lot of right pedal in, uh, holding my climb, and all of a sudden my engine quits. I panic. I lower the nose as I'm taught, but I'm kind of frozen. I still got the airplane in control, and I'm looking for a place to go. I'm getting slower and slower and slower. All of a sudden it stalls. I put an aileron, and it continues to go. Look straight ahead. Stop the roll with the rudder. Push forward, stick. Now we're just in a dive and then pull out. All you have to do is use the other two control surfaces that you have that are functioning absolutely fantastic. Nothing's happened to them. They have not quit working for you. So don't stop flying the airplane. When the airplane stalls and begins a rotation, look out. Stop the rotation with the rudder immediately. Apply forward stick, and the, the spin is not going to happen. We're going to demonstrate some more on that. Okay, I'm just going to do a standard stall, and I want to demonstrate the authority that the rudder has. I'm going to do an unusual stall. We never aggravate a stall, but I'm going to go to full up elevator. I'm not going to let the aircraft recover, and I'm going to demonstrate to you how much authority the rudder has controlling your heading. If you control your heading, you're not going to spin. Then all you have to do is push forward stick. The situation is over, so let's do it. I'm slowing down. I'm keeping the airplane in trim, getting close to stall. All right, here's full up elevator. Look, my nose not, is not going anywhere. There's the buffet. It tries to go right, I push left rudder. It tries to go left, I push right rudder. And I can, if I over control, I aggravate it. But all I got to do is make smooth inputs. And look, I'm just going to fall all the way to the ground, controlling my heading with the rudder. And it's not going to go anywhere. So this is anti-spin. Don't let the nose rotate. Use your rudder to keep the nose straight. And then just push forward stick. It's all over. Now let me demonstrate that again. Climb up and get some more altitude. So here's the point I want to make. Just because the, air, the airplane wing stalls, you've exceeded the critical angle of attack. And if you're out of trim, it's going to start a rotation. Immediately, look out front. Don't let the nose start to rotate. Correct it with rudder immediately and push forward stick. It's all over. So don't quit flying the airplane. The most important thing that I want to emphasize is keep flying. Just because the wing is stalled and you've lost aileron control, you haven't lost rudder or elevator. So use those two things and save your life. That's all there is to it. Let me demonstrate another one. This time I'm going to demonstrate a stall out of trim, and the airplane's going to rotate. I'm going to put opposite aileron, and it's going to continue to rotate. Then I'm going to apply the anti-spin technique, opposite rudder of the rotation, and forward stick, and you're going to see that the airplane will recover immediately. All right, so here we go. Now I'm about a half ball width out of trim. When the airplane stalls, it should rotate. There it goes. I'm going to put opposite aileron. It still rotates. Anti-spin technique. Opposite rudder, forward stick, and now, if you noticed, I'm just in a dive and everything's working again. The airplane was going into a spin. Now I let it go too far because I wanted to demonstrate how stalled the wing is with opposite aileron. It further stalled the airplane and began the rotation. 
I applied opposite rudder, I stopped the rotation, forward stick, and it was all over. Now I'm going to show you the anti-spin technique in the same scenario, and it won't rotate at all. Okay. Climb back up to a safe altitude. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to do the anti-spin technique. I'm not going to let the nose rotate. Even though the airplane stalls and starts to rotate, I'm going to immediately use my rudder to stop the rotation and push forward stick, and it's all over. All right, so same scenario. I'm out of trim a little bit. Maybe end of it in a little turn. Doesn't really matter. Airplane stall, starts to rotate, look straight ahead, opposite rudder, forward stick, and it's just that simple. Nothing happens. Anti-spin, don't let the nose go. Look out front, drive with your feet, keep the nose going straight ahead, push forward stick, and it's all over. Neutralize the ailerons if you can think about it, but if you don't, don't worry about it. Just get the opposite rudder in, get the forward stick when the wing... Uh, is no longer stalled, the ailerons will become effective again and roll the airplane level. So the thing to remember, if you ever are a base to final and the airplane stalls and starts to rotate upside and can, continues to turn, anti-spin technique. Look straight ahead, apply rudder to prevent the nose from changing heading, forward stick immediately, and you're not going to lose very much altitude. I'll demonstrate that now. Here's your base to final, or engines at idle. Winds pushed us, we're turning past our runway, we pull, airplane starts to rotate, anti-rotation, look straight ahead, almost had full rudder, relax the stick pressure and it stops. There's no reason to enter a spin if you use the anti-spin technique. As soon as it starts to do something you don't want to happen, Lock the nose on a heading, push forward stick, and it's all over, roll level. It doesn't matter how far it goes. If it's completely upside down, just push the rudder in to stop the nose from rotating, push that forward stick, and now you're just in a dive and roll out. Another straight ahead stall demonstrating the authority of the rudder. I'm gonna do an aggravated stall, this is non-standard pull up elevator and I'm controlling the heading with the rudder. There's left rudder. It's trying to roll right as I put in. There it goes left. Anyway, the point is I'm not losing it. I'm not changing my heading because I'm controlling the nose with the rudder. You apply forward stick with the opposite rudder and there is not going to be a spin. That's what you got to do in the uh, situation where you find yourself stalling and it's starting to roll. You can't stop the roll, opposite rudder to stop the turn, and full forward stick or whatever forward pressure you need to, to break the stall. Then the airplane's flying again. Well, there you go, folks. That is the anti-spin training that I wanted to expose today. Um, if you remember, just because the airplane stalls the wing, you've lost one axis of control, but you still have two. You've got a very strong rudder that will not let the nose rotate if you use it. And you have the elevator. So use those two controls to fix the airplane's attitude. Don't quit flying. Do not quit flying. Fly the airplane. You still have control of the other two control surfaces. Don't quit. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've got other videos that's going to be coming up in the future. And if you like what you see on uh, Air Park Living, please hit the subscribe button and share this video. I think this is going to be uh, some very important information that people need to know. Just because the wing stalls, you haven't lost control of the airplane. I want you to remember that. You have not lost control. You've lost control over your roll, but you still have control of the rudder. You still have control of the elevator. Use them quickly and the situation will be over. You'll be back to flying, and then you can live another day to talk about the close call that you had, which, at the end of the day, uh, it's just part of flying, is recovering from things that happen and knowing how to fly the airplane.
Uh, I think it's a natural reaction when you get in a stall and the wing starts to drop, and you put an opposite aileron and it continues to row, you feel this sense of, I've lost control, but no, you haven't. Remember this, you still have rudder, you still have elevator. Apply opposite rudder, push forward stick, and it's all over. Thanks for uh, joining me with uh, Air Park Living. This is our uh, safety training video for the day. And uh, like I said, please share this with others. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. i got more stuff coming up for you. Thanks a lot.